Hey everyone, welcome back to Google Workspace Recap, your number one source for everything Workspace by the Tab Geeks Network. My name is Jesse Nolan, my co-host is Steve Larson, and we're here to help you keep up. Heads up everyone, Google I.O. starts tomorrow, or Wednesday, depending on when you listen to this, and a little birdie told me that there will be quite a bit of interesting things for us Workspace admins, so be sure to tune in and check that out. Uh, we Where will, of course, those. do... What? I say make sure you get those uh, chirping bird sounds added in there. Right, right. Tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> right. We will, of course, do our best to cover it for uh, for all of you in case you should miss it. Good to have you back at your normal self, Steve. How's how's it going? Uh, doing good. I was out this weekend uh, doing a little bit of training on the on the boat and took the kids out to the Adler Planetarium this weekend, which is a lot of fun. Ooh, very nice. So, yeah, nice, uh, great weather this Sunday in Chicago. Flat... Uh, flat water and uh had the had the boat up to like 50 miles an hour so. oh sweet yeah maxing it out <laughs> nice. nice nice yeah I, I love going out on boats i don't do it often enough uh the last one was a cruise so a little bit of a bigger boat than what you're talking about but uh yeah i mean a little bit i mean yeah a little bit <laughs> <laughs> by a magnitude of about 500 but sure a little bit a little bit a little bit of boat a little bit of bigger boat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my last weekend uh, here, we got a new outdoor playset and uh, outdoor furniture installed and whatnot. So the kids were having a blast playing on that with their cousins and stuff. So always good to uh, keep the kids busy so that we don't murder them. I mean, so that uh, mm. they're kept <laughs> occupied during right. the non-school and work days. So. <laughs> yeah. so a little short on the updates, but a lot of news this week. Well... I mean, you know, not too short. I mean, a decent average number right there in the middle. You know, five updates and uh, a few little minor updates here and there on a few of the other products, uh, you know, related to, to Workspace. So we will get you through all of those. And, uh, you know, one little thing we noticed uh, also in chat was that uh, icon to copy links to files that are added there in the in the chatter spaces. Super so, helpful on that one because yeah. I always find myself right clicking and then moving over to the browser I actually wanted in um, mm. to open it or to send it to somebody or oh, whatnot. So yeah, yep, yeah. And then I, the other thing too that I didn't realize until very recently was I was always looking for like a almost like a you know a copy link with you know with just one click in Google Drive and yep. didn't realize you could just when you do Control C select the file and do Control C that copies the url when you paste it in somewhere so yep magic that's useful yeah magic of browser uh shortcuts yeah yep yep all right well let's get through the agenda here and uh, as i mentioned that copy link option in chat for drive files is a little um minor update that we noticed hadn't seen any updates on that but uh, uh in terms of the main published releases that we're seeing this last week uh there's a uh, the ability to uh, see for or the greater visibility here. Um, I was trying to translate this here into like normal language sometimes, but <laughs> the, the title here says providing greater visibility with additional Google calendar statuses in Google chat. Uh, next is the expansion uh, of Gmail security with BIMI. Uh, so expanding upon Gmail security with BIMI there. I thought that's uh, something that has been out for a while, but yeah, 2021 they introduced it. So this is just a little uh, additional features to to that. Uh, Google the ability, also wants next... the blue check. That's what that is. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, next is the ability to manage all spaces in Google Chat through the admin console. There we go. Uh, that the, you can now quote previous messages in Google Chat. And then uh, in terms of uh, BARD updates, well, this one kind of made it into the published releases of Workspace. Uh, you can turn access to BARD on or off for your users. And we noticed that that uh, will be available in differently worded sections in your additional services because one domain says experimental apps, another says early access apps. So yep. if you are looking for what the article or the update says and you don't find it well uh, check for um, check for experimental apps instead if you don't find early access apps and uh, in terms of other releases that we saw this week uh, the drive for desktop 
uh, client has been updated to version 74. Uh, very minor updates there in terms of uh, what's what's happened, just some additional bug fixes and performance improvements. So uh, don't have to go through that too much in too much more detail. And then also with Meet Hardware, again, just a kind of a minor update on the, I think it was Meet Hardware 103 uh, that was, uh, that's currently out. Uh, some, uh, some fixes there where uh, they would resolve an issue that caused a message waiting for application window and it the inability to use the device uh, that it was for uh, one of the Chrome OS version updates. And then there's also uh, the ability to uh, move devices to unsupported to the or to the supported release track and some minor stability fixes there. Um, updates that we saw uh, on Chrome, well, Chrome, one, Chrome version 113 came out and uh, there are some some just some minor things to make note of there in terms of the admin console updates. Uh, we'll go through those in a little bit more detail during the updates. And and then in the news, uh, we did see a decent number of things happening in the news. Seems like this is uh, starting to be the Google Workspace news show rather than the Google Workspace <laughs> recap show. So, uh, well, the updates blog folks are uh, sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, starting started off with a Verge article, Verge article here. Uh, about how Gmail now has that verif verifiable blue check uh, relating to that BIMI update uh, that we talked yep. about just a few moments ago. And uh, from uh, from Google here, we see the beginning of the end of the password. So interesting uh, kind of topic that you see popping up here all the time. Uh, so we'll see what Google has to say about that. And the bleeping computer talks about Google re uh, is going to be re uh, will remove secure website indicators in Chrome. 117. Uh, there is a, a Google Workspace user love playlist. Interesting. I don't know. On YouTube. Is this, Jesse? Um, okay. This is straight from Google. Okay. Spread in the user love. <laughs> right. A new series that celebrates user love and why customers are choosing Google Workspace. All right. That's cool. Uh, nine to five uh, is talking about it. Google is bringing Gmail and Docs generative AI uh, to ten times more trusted testers. And Jesse really can't understand who those people are because he thinks he's one of them and doesn't have <laughs> access yet. <laughs> you don't either, uh, my friend. You've I, got just I, as much pull as I'm, I do. I'm just saying I don't. I'm you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next is The Verge, where Google Ads are getting more annoying. So, uh, there's also another Verge article here about the rise and fall of Google AMP. And back to a 9 to 5 article you're talking about, Chromebooks may soon get native integration with Google Tasks. And then finally, to wrap things up, yet another uh, Verge article talking about Google I.O., uh, which will be this week, uh, what to uh, expect and how to watch it. Shout out to The Verge for awesome tech coverage. <laughs> yeah. yeah love those guys all right well in terms of updates uh, we'll talk uh, more details about those now uh, so being able to provide greater visibility with additional google calendar status in google chat has been released um, so uh, as this Starting today, and this was last week, Tuesday, uh, chat status is going to include some more information, such as how much longer someone is in a meeting or focus time for. Uh, also, if someone has an upcoming uh, commitment within the next 10 minutes. And then finally, if someone has an upcoming out of office event within the next business day. So some very useful insight there into what's happening with uh, users availability to give you, you know, just a little bit more insight as to when or you know when to expect a response or you know when they're going to be busy and i think this is super helpful uh, is because, it is it new part yeah. of this that it's showing the local time uh local time let's see working from new york main uh, building 336 yeah, pm that. est when you're starting a chat with somebody in the background there mm -hmm. i I don't work with too many people that are not in my time zone, so I wouldn't have the experience with this, but you work with people all over the place, so. I do, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely useful too. And I don't know if that's part if, of this or if it's new or not. Have you seen yeah. it before? Well, no, no, so this is, this, if you look at the update article here, this that does talk about that. 
Uh, it says additionally, you can see the current working location and local time zone set by your colleague when sending a new message to them in chat. Oh, so, I skipped that line. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's, it says a new message. So, right. I don't send new it, messages though, very often. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Because most of the time you're you're already speaking to them, and but their their location and working time could change. So, right. I, there must be a way to see that. Um, you know, after just have a little message, local sure. time clock next to their name on the top of every uh, yeah. chat thread. It's got to be yeah, a better way to integrate that is. for ongoing usage. Right, because it's it's like you have to scroll. Would you have to scroll all the way to the top to see that? I, their... I guess, yeah. I wonder. Um, I actually yeah. just I just took on a client that has uh, offices around the world. Uh, as part of Tab Services Consulting, and I went in search of a clock to put uh, the time, the different time zones of their offices in my taskbar on Mac OS. And I, for anybody who also has this problem, it's called Clocker, and it is free, and it is amazing. And go and download okay. it. I've got four different uh, time zones, dates, and time with the name of the office in my in my uh, whatever it's called menu bar. Okay. So. Yeah, Thank you cool. to Google for you know also helping to maybe solve this, but I think that they need to do a little bit more implementation here because that's that's an awesome feature that you need that. Yeah. yeah, and it does. I mean, that information is all the way at the top of a chat conversation with someone. So which I never ever I mean, see. I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing it right now on your profile within the Workspace Recap domain, but again, because it just kind of started coming out, it may not be visible yet, mm -hmm. and. And it also, you know, may not be triggering to show it on existing conversations that you've created with previous people. Like it said, it says, you know, when you start chatting with new with people uh, with new messages, it's going to show up. So maybe yep. only that. Maybe only when you first open the window. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I'm going to find myself like mm -hmm. clicking to open a new chat with that person just to see what their yeah. local time is. <laughs> right. And it does say colleagues too. So whether or not this will work across domains right. That's yet also to be seen. So, interesting. Yeah. So it looks like it may we just be see. internal users. Uh, in terms of availability uh, and rollout to, uh, for this one, started on the 2nd of May on a extended rollout for both rapid release and scheduled release domains and it could be potentially longer than 15 days for visibility. So that could be why we're not seeing it yet at all for us. Oh. Uh, it will be available to all workspace customers as well as uh, G Suite Basic and Business, uh, but not available to those with personal Google accounts. And then the expansion of uh, Gmail security with Bimmy. Uh, so expanding upon that here, uh, the uh, launch of that was, as I mentioned, back in 2021. Uh, so building upon that feature, users will now be able to see a checkmark icon for senders that have adopted BIMI, and that will help users identify messages from legitimate senders versus impersonators. So that blue check Google is going to be getting. Uh, we'll have that verified logo, and you'll know that it's genuine and came from them. I wonder if that's going to help with um, you know, not having Gmail classify messages from Google and sending them to spam folders. You know, because even some of the emails directly from Google end up in spam for some reason. So it'd be great if, you know, verified emails like this don't spend up in spam. Maybe you uh, can make it a, uh, uh, a a specific tag in the a filter. Do not send any verified hmm. spam. Maybe. I wonder if that's like a, maybe a content compliance rule. Hmm. I'd like to clarify that's... also, it's hard to get verified this way because you need the trademark yeah. of your brand. You need to be right. trademarked internationally yes. i think definitely domestically but uh in the u.s but i'm not sure about internationally and yeah it's not straightforward yeah <laughs> um and this has been out for a while and i've i've only seen it a handful of brands like the launch partners bank of america american airlines kind of a thing that are actually implementing this possibly because yeah. it's so difficult to implement it's not like it's not like your kid's school is going to have this and so that you know for sure it's coming from them verified as them you know mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of requirements for this yeah um, your bank hopefully has this yeah yep 
yeah, just trying to go to the BIMI working group here and see a list of things that might be required. But uh, yeah, definitely, it's uh, it's not a you know upload a picture and just uh, verify a domain with a you know a, a text record or something like that. A little bit more involved than that, right? So. Um, yeah, so let's see what, uh, yeah, not too much more to say on this update here. Um, just reading through this, see if there's anything else worth noting. Uh, no, that's, that's really it. So, uh, rollout for this one started on the 3rd of May, uh, on both rep release and schedule these domains on a full rollout up to fifth, oh, up to one to three days for visibility and everyone's getting this one. So any Google Gmail user will be seeing this. Yep. And next we have the ability to manage uh, spaces uh, in the admin console, all of the spaces. So there's a new section in the admin console dedicated to managing spaces in Google Chat. And Finally. you'll be able to see all the spaces in the domain, members of the spaces take actions such as adding members or changing a member role, yes. This is a long-awaited uh, feature to help <laughs> manage spaces because it is, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's been left to those uh, managers of the spaces that you know, these are that create those spaces up until now to be able to uh, to do anything with it. So you'd have to be added to that to be able to help uh, a user if you needed to do anything there. Uh, but this now gives you, um, you know, admin visibility and control, which is great. I'm almost afraid to look at the list of spaces that people oh, in the organization oh, yeah. have have created because it's kind of a you know no man's land. You create yeah. chats with people, you create spaces with people. Who the hell knows what they've created? But if you're yeah. going to have the ability for people to search for other spaces, you're gonna you're gonna want to actually take a look at this and see what's available in your organization or or even not available. You could have a, a yeah. space everybody hates the boss. You probably want to go and have a talk with the people that have that space. <laughs> <laughs> yep yikes yeah so until now if you were creating the spaces like that i really didn't know that they existed mm -hmm. uh, i didn't really have any it was a black hole those. but now yeah. all yeah. is about to be revealed yeah. so if you well, have think, one of those groups go and rename it <laughs> i think you probably did see there's probably something in the drive lo or in the, in the log events right of you'd have to really be looking space. for it well, yes, yes, it would be. Um, yeah, chat log events. I wonder if it even shows up in there. Yeah, I mean, you can see things posted a message. Yeah, you can see the stuff there. So there probably is an event for created a space, right? Event is, there's even like emoji created and all that stuff. Yeah. Room name updated. Yeah, room created. Oh, look at that. It's still called rooms in the logs. Isn't that <laughs> cool? Do we have um, API calls for this yet? Do you know? I'm trying to remember. Uh, add API add people to for, spaces. Uh, there, Although I guess there you are do some groups, so there's no point. There are some chat APIs with Google that I think is in rolling out. Yeah, yeah. I just right? wasn't sure if they were here yet or not. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can, what I was, members, the use case I was thinking yeah. of for this was you, you just put a group in and then you just use the APIs to, uh, populate the group. So that would not really be, uh, the best use case here. Yeah. But the chat API does allow you to do that. So, mm -hmm. um, there are members management where you can create, delete, get list, uh, messages as well. You can do all that stuff, list, create, delete, um, all those things. So there are APIs for it. You can create the space as well. Yeah. So that is coming. Yeah, I think it's. I think it was in maybe developer preview. Mm, could be to to get access to it. Yeah. So it might be coming to production soon. Uh, the rollout on this one. Uh, oh yeah. Well, so let's go to some of the details here about some of the space management tools here. Um, giving the admins the ability to see the number of members in the space, whether conversation history is on or off of the space, uh, what the sharing permissions are, 
and then as well as, as active spaces and spaces with no recent activity. So those are the types of things that you'll start to see in the admin console for all of your different spaces in your organization. Yeah. And it looks like there will be some additional admin roles for your, you know, non super admins. So they will need to be given the managed chat and space conversation role if you want them to be able to access this. So keep that in mind. Uh, for those super admins that are that have a larger, you know, a larger group of admins that may not have uh, full access to things. Uh, rollout for this one started uh, starts today, Monday, on the eighth of May, uh, for both rapid release as as well as scheduled release domains on a gradual rollout up to fifteen days for visibility, and this one's available to all workspace customers. Uh, quoting of uh, messages in Google Chat. Quote a previous message here. So yeah, it looks nice. I mean, uh, the only problem is it just doesn't have the classic threading. So <laughs> I mean, it's the only downside. Um, I it like works it. the way I like you'd this. expect it to, I like guys. It. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this looks good. Before you start complaining um, about it, let's say that it works the way that it should. I mean, it looks great. Right, it does look good. Uh, yeah, exactly, this does look good. Um, it's just on a, uh, a, a threaded, a thread right. space that's not the old thread space, the new thread space. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, I wish they had this ability to. Uh, What's this availability game. tab? Oh, in this. Uh, in the screenshot. Yeah, I know the screenshot. Is in the space. At that. I was looking I've never it. seen yeah. availability before. Uh, that is true. Chat files tasks. So. Yeah, a little sneak peek there at uh, a new Ooh. feature coming on the line, availability <laughs> in chat spaces. I'm sure it's probably looking at, you know, the people that are part of that chat space and if you would need to schedule a meeting with them and what availability looks like. So it's probably Genius. just pulling in just like what calendar does, right? When you have all those people and it looks for who's available the next, you know, time slot, uh, probably what we're going to see there in the space. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, looking at the, if you look at the animation here, looks really cool. looks nice. Um, yeah, does what it says it does and looks, looks nice as well. So a uh, rollout for this one is going to be a uh, split between rep release and schedule release domains where rep release domains have started to see this already on a gradual rollout, uh, up to 15 days for visibility that started on the 4th of May. Good release domains will see this in about 10 days or so on the 18th of May on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility. And it is going to be available to uh, all workspace customers as well as G Suite Basic Business and those with personal Google accounts. Pretty sure that this is only working in the groups that are configured with inline threading, though. Right. It's not yes. going to be available in the other ones. I would expect that to be the case too. Yep. Which means we're already now seeing new features coming only to the new inline threading. So folks who are in yeah. the boat that Steve's in, get on board. <laughs> it's all right. I got my threads. That's what it's for. I'm good. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see if I have any. Uh... See if we can see it in one of the other ones. I have some. Do you have some new thread? Uh... Uh, I Closed had, spaces. I think I do. I would have to double yeah. check though. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Let's see the Google cloud partners space here is, um, <laughs> is we really should test this shit that. before the show. Instead yeah, of live. I like, well, no, I mean, I like checking it live cause we don't, you know, you never know cause they, you know, when they have these rollout dates, you can't really know yeah. for certain until we're recording if it's going to be available because maybe it just hit it you know that this, this morning this afternoon this evening so yeah i don't see it on that one domain just yet to test it out so keep an eye out for that as it comes out to your domain uh next final update of the of the week uh the ability to turn access to barred on or off for your users so this is going to show up in your additional google services so when you go under uh, apps and look for, uh, for the additional Google services, uh, you will start to see a, uh, either something called early access apps 
or you will see it as experimental apps. It will be a blue icon uh, that has that kind of uh, scientific beaker with little bubbles coming up from it. So uh, that is what it'll look like. And then you'll have the ability to, uh, at the moment, it, it says data access settings and allow users at uh, your organization to access Google Workspace and customer data using early access apps. So uh, some things to make note of there, you know, those digital services would be things that are not covered under the workspace agreement, data protection, data processing agreement, or HIPAA business uh, associate addendum. So, uh, and it, it looked to be off by default. So it was not allowed uh, when I went into the workspace admins domain. So I presume that that is the case here. If we look at the details here, of course, that is what it says. The feature will be off by default. It can be enabled at the domain OU or group level. And um, you know, access to core services in Google Workspace by, uh, by early access apps is off by default. As it's uh, yeah, something that you really have to think about if you want to enable it. So not all organizations are going to uh, be able to enable this. Um, yeah, yeah, I was looking around for it. Yeah was looking around for it and couldn't figure out where it was. And I checked the the day it first came out because it was like, ooh, Bard, we have some people that want to test that. And uh, yeah. poking around, poking around, poking around, could not find it. Earlier today, I was playing around with it. And uh, it, it's called uh, Early Access, but it's not where I thought it was going to be. And on Steve's side, it's actually called Experimental Apps instead of Early Access Apps. Now, they tell you to look in the admin console under Apps and then uh, under additional Google services. And then on there, there will be something that is early access apps, but it wasn't a subheading. It was one of the apps that you had to select was called early access apps. And that's how I right. uh, found it and got in. That being said, all I found there was the permissions, not the ability to turn BARD on or off. So still sort of kind of funky rolling out here, not quite totally there yet. Well, is it, um, but it's the same. It's the same as what's in the screenshot. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of um, what it means, right? So it's, it's not specifically BARD. It's more But it of, didn't enable BARD. It didn't? You're saying it didn't so. enable it? Uh, maybe it just took a little while. Let me jump over into the other domain and check. Test it in live. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I wonder if, you still have to probably join the waitlist, right? And presumably, is it showing? Yeah. Uh, still can't join the waitlists. Right. It still says it's not enabled by your yep. admin. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you know why though? Mm hmm. So you tick that you tick the box, right? To allow it. I believe so. Right. But also there's a service status. You have to turn it on service status on. I bet you it says off still for you. Even though you take the box, you have to enable the service. Which, so which domain are you looking at? You're looking at tab geeks? No, no, no. I'm looking at just another domain, but I'm just, there's two values for it. One is the service status. Hmm. And then one is the core data access permissions. So in the screenshot, actually what you see in the screenshot is not exactly right because it's missing some of the yeah, parts service of status what's is there now. Was it? Yeah. Was it off? Is it off for you? Uh, I'm on the tab geek side at the moment. That, right, that's what I mean. Is it showing us yeah. off? It was yeah. showing us off, right? Yep. So exactly. I just turned so both on now on the tab side, and we'll see if it does anything. Yep. Yep. So it's off by default as well as unticked by default. So as soon as yeah, as soon as I enabled it and ticked it, it's you can opt in now to receive updates about Bard and join the waitlist, and it's pretty quick uh, yep. to enable Instant. that. Look at yep. that. Yep. All right. Well then, that's how to do it. <laughs> I will mm -hmm. uh, I will try to remember to record my screen doing this uh, to include <laughs> in the video side of things here so that people can understand what the hell we're talking about because I am sure that we lost some of you there going through all of that. And apologies to those on the audio side. Um, go watch the show on YouTube. <laughs> no, no. You can watch it on... You can listen on podcasts. You can actually watch the show on Spotify if you are so inclined. But I really feel anybody who's listening to us on podcast side of things really doesn't want to watch the video otherwise they'd be on youtube let us know in the comments the slash let us know on twitter if that's the case for you um 
It's the downside of uh, podcasting is there's really not a whole lot of <laughs> feedback from people. Yeah. All right. Was that uh, um, everything that you had for that update? Yeah, I think that was it. I'll just wrap that up with the details on the rollout pace there and availability. Uh, so that one uh, started rolling out on the 5th of May on a garage rollout uh, up to 15 days for visibility for both wrapper release and schedule release domains. And uh, this is available to all Workspace customers as well as G Suite Legacy, uh, basic and uh, G Suite Basic and Business ones. Uh, is not available for Google Workspace for Education accounts designated as under 18. So there's an article there for more information on that. Okay. Cool. Alrighty. And yeah, that's it for the uh, updates we saw for. Workspace specifically, we did talk a little bit about the drive for desktop updates, not too much, you know, more information there. Uh, and then also meet hardware, but did want to dive into a couple of things on the Chrome 113 release summary. So, so that risk assessment card, which we talked about before, that is now out and available in your admin console. So if you want to check that out, it is pretty cool. It, uh, you know, it gives you the uh, information. So if once if you go into, I'm just going to navigate through here. I was looking at it on another tab. Uh, if you go into your uh, device uh, devices and under Chrome and manage browsers, uh, when you go into one of the managed browsers that you have, you'll have your list of installed apps and extensions. And the one that you know that I clicked on here in this example was the application launcher for Drive uh, with Google. And from there, I can then see uh, a couple different things. So uh, the, the normal section of installation policy details, all that stuff is still available uh, at the top. And then as you scroll down, you have the risk assessment uh, section and links to the CR excavator as well as the spin AI uh, sites to get more insight into what that extension is doing. And uh, you know, just keep in mind, these are third party services that are just, you know, integrated now into the Amazon console to give you that uh, visibility here directly. And it's pretty cool. You know, it's a uh, really insightful information makes it easy to, uh, to get to this from the Amazon console and, uh, you know, helps you as an admin determine what extensions may be useful or potentially malicious. If you're you know looking for, um, what to approve maybe and what to not approve in your domain if you're doing things like that. And then finally, three new uh, policies in the Emma console have come out. So Chrome apps, web view, permissive behavior allowed. That was just one. That was the one of them. <laughs> uh, and then uh, next we have third party storage partitioning uh, setting. And then finally, third party storage partitioning blocked for origins. So if you want to learn more about those, click through the uh, updates link and learn a little bit more about each of those different policies. So that will wrap up the updates that I have for the week. Jesse, over to you in the news. All right. So seems that uh, having the blue check is all the rage these days, thanks to the conversations around Twitter. And then Facebook started a test doing their own that mm. you can purchase a blue check and yeah, everybody doesn't want to have a blue yeah. check anymore because now it's not cool to have a blue check. But uh, um, I personally have a blue check because I've already been paying for Twitter blue check this Twitter blue, whatever the hell it was called, long before Elon bought the company. Um, but uh, Google, honestly, this is how it should have been when they first rolled this out. You know, if you go back and you look at our show when we talked about this, Steve, you may remember, and of course, this is talking about Bimmy, the brand indicator for message identification feature. You may remember that you and I both said, couldn't you just put the logo of another company in your email there? And it would look very similar here. It wasn't really very easy to show or yeah. to tell. Yeah, if you hover over it, maybe you can tell this and that. But on the fly, it wasn't easy to tell that this was a verified Bimmy setup. Right recognized etc right. now it is there's a check mark yes um yep. theoretically yep. um you could probably put a check mark icon at the end of your name 
maybe. I wonder if that would work if you're a nefarious individual trying to mm. circumvent this. Um, but this is just some more information about that. And, um, you know, uh, talking about uh, the Ooh, fact that point. Google is, we'll have to try that. Also, uh, yeah. the article brings up the point that Google, as we mentioned last week or a couple of weeks ago, that Google is replacing the lock icon in Google Chrome, similarly to this, to make it easier for people to know what is legitimately a verified and safe site. And their reasoning on that is nobody really, you know, like the nobody really knows what the lock icon means. It, it originally meant that it, the site was secure. Of course, all of us probably know that. But to most people on the web, if they think that it's a secure site, SSL doesn't block you from getting fished or hacked or anything like that. So not well, all that effective. It just, it's secure, yeah, it sure. Just, it just means it's that the secured. transmission of information between you and exactly. the server, exactly. it doesn't but mean plenty that the of server scammers, then... Plenty of hackers are using SSLs. Right. So... All right. Speaking of cybersecurity, this is a yeah. blog post on the keyword under safety and security, the beginning of the end of the password. And this is, of, of course, talking about pass keys, which I'm very excited to test out, but is not yet available for workspace accounts. So stay tuned on this, uh, on this note. But essentially, this takes it a step further than your traditional two-step verification. Uh, explained on the post here, pass keys are a new way to sign into apps and websites. They're both easier to use and more secure than passwords, so users no longer need to rely on the names of pets, birthdays, or the infamous password123. Instead, passkeys let users sign into apps and sites the same way they unlock their devices, with a fingerprint, a face scan, or a screen lock pin. Uh, pin, I'm less so less happy about. I prefer the biometric side of things, because A, it's much faster and easier for people, and B, it's more secure, so... That's what this is all about, right? Uh, but unlike passwords, passkeys are resistant to online attacks like phishing, making them more secure than uh, things like SMS one-time codes. So if you're interested in what's coming for that, you can try them out at g.co forward slash passkeys, but uh, not yet for workspace accounts. It does say at the end here, for Google workspace accounts, administrators will soon have the option to enable passkeys for their end users during sign-in. So very exciting there. Next up. Oh, I got a week ahead of myself here. Google will remove secure website indicators in Chrome 117. Maybe we haven't talked about it yet, and I'm just delusional. Why didn't you stop me when I was saying that before, Steve? Well, <laughs> no, no, I, thought, I don't know what day uh, it is. Did I we talk about this before? No, you said they will be removing it. That's what you're talking about with the Bimmy thing. But yeah, but I had right. said that they that we had talked about it in last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, time is time is weird, wibbly wobbly for me no, these no, days. We, Okay, so yeah, I, I, what I heard from you was that the, we talked about the check mark with the Bimmy stuff before and the icon, and then yes, but then also about the, the okay. Chrome stuff. Sorry, maybe it, maybe I didn't, it. and it just came out that way uh, in my head, perhaps. Yeah. Um, essentially, right to me at the, time. the lock icon in the Chrome browser, Google has figured out that nobody actually, or most people, don't actually know what this is. And as we said, it was first introduced to note that the site was secure for communications. Um, but now that 99% of all web pages that are loaded in Chrome are loaded over HTTPS, they are secure, it's no longer necessary as an indicator. So they are actually moving it and changing it as part of the uh, material design changes here. And they're changing it to a um, a variant of the tune icon, they call it. It is essentially the little settings icon, but it's been material uh, materialized, materialified, <laughs> material, <laughs> material design did, did whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, it takes a little getting used to, but honestly, it makes a little bit more sense because when you do click on that, even with the security, even with the bell, not the bell, sorry, even with the lock now, what drops down is that you're, you have your cookies and site data and site settings and about this page. And so it does make sense that you would have some settings on there because some of the other things that come up on there and nowadays, if you're on a video site, for example, Google Meet, uh, you have the access to control whether or not it can use your uh, your your camera and your microphone. So it does make sense to be changing it up that way. Um, it just makes it more clear for users overall about where to find these things. So good move there. Um, 
and uh, and that'll be coming in Chrome 117. The next one here is a YouTube playlist from Google that is, well, just sharing the love about Google Workspace. So there's a couple of different individuals here that talk about, um, you know, what they love about it and uh, why it's so wonderful for them. So if you're looking for uh, ways to uh, sell clients on Google Workspace or, uh, you know, examples of other companies using it, go and, uh, and check these out. Some interesting stuff there. All right, next one. We are going to talk about Gen Apps and uh, generative AI a little bit here. Google brings Gmail and Docs generative AI to 10x more trusted testers. And I don't know how many of you know this, but I'm part of a program at Google that um, is 500 people and is called the Cloud Innovators or Champion, Cloud Champion Innovators. I never get it correct here. But they promised us that we were going to be getting access to this. So I'm wondering when the innovators, the you know, those of us who are supposed to be getting early access are getting access to this, given that there's 10x more trusted testers in here. Um, as soon as we get some access in this, we can start playing around with it and uh, and getting an idea of what's coming. And um, Steve, we're going to have to uh, shoehorn you in as well there. Um, I know. Weren't you on the uh, the dev side of that, though? I thought you, were, you had the... Uh, the Devrel, what's their community called? Oh. I'm forgetting. I'm blanking. On yeah, I, I thought you were in that one. I gotta, I gotta see about that. You gotta renew should, it or something. I should be. <laughs> you, should, you were. I gotta talk we, to someone. When we met. All right, we'll we'll get you in. Uh, but essentially, here, uh, this does talk about just what is available. And quite frankly, I think we're about to see a lot more demos of this come Wednesday with Google I/O. So. Uh, stay tuned there. But some of the things you're going to be able to do in Google Docs is you're going to be able to click the Help Me Write button, and um, it can summarize things for you, or it can expand on them, shorten, elaborate, rephrase, um, or custom. You can give it your own prompt and tell it what to do. So I am very much looking forward to this. I've been enjoying playing around with ChatGTP uh, in the work in the workplace. I was looking for a template for an SOP, and I just said, "Hey, ChatGTP, write me this," and it did. And it's not done. It's not specific to what I'm trying to do, but it gave me an excellent uh, starting point, a wonderful framework for working on this. So I think that, you know, like all things that is, like, for example, when Google came out, people didn't have to go to the library to do research anymore. You could do research on the internet from the comfort of your comfy chair. And I think this is just going to accelerate what we're able to do uh, tremendously, um, uh, just like, you know, access to information on Google did back in the day. So yeah, looking forward. Next up in this was utterly inevitable given the current state of the economy, Gmail is getting ready to put ads, don't worry, not in the paid versions, in the consumer versions, uh, not only in the top, but also in the middle of your feed. So, you know, everybody's trying to find new ways to squeeze more money out of their products and Gmail being bloody frickin' enormous and owning email pretty much around the world. This seems like a pretty quick and easy way for them to add in, well, doubling their uh, footprint of advertising here. So um, I guess hopefully my Google stock will do better, but uh, anybody who's using this on the Gmail side probably isn't going to be too happy to uh, to see this rolling out. Um a statement here from Google says, we're always experimenting with formats and working on ways to help people discover and connect with new businesses. And the promotions tab uh, shows promotional emails from businesses that people might subscribe to, as well as offers and deals from companies people might like. We rolled out in-stream ads in the promotions tab last year across mobile and in the past month expanded to desktop as well. So they are trying to do it in a way that is helpful to people, I suppose. Um, personally, I, I don't really ever use my at gmail.com gmail account so not something that i'm going to really come across much all right this is an interesting article and a long one the verge went hard on this and admittedly i did not have time to read this entire thing this is casey newton and neelai patel neelai patel being um founder co-founder of verge um and uh, and david pierce so some really really powerful um uh, industry reporting here. Sorry, the piece is by David Pierce and uh, and Neela and Casey contributed to it. Um, essentially, it's talking about Google AMP. And Google tried to create a better, faster web for media companies with their standard. And um, apparently, it didn't really work out. Uh, you had a lot going on with other companies trying to 
well, trying to battle it by copying it. You know, Facebook was trying to lock everybody into their platform. Apple was trying to lock everybody into their platform. And Google was trying to make it a standard. And, well, because of Google's position, a lot of people just didn't really want to use it. Um, I personally have always been a fan of AMP. The pages do load incredibly, incredibly fast. Um, but I guess, you know, it didn't didn't work out across across the org. So... Um, but this is a very, very long article. So if you're interested in the whole story about how AMP came to be and what has happened to it over the years, um, then you should go and, and read it. Actually, I wonder if they have a YouTube version of it. A lot of times with their really big articles, The Verge will um, will record a whole YouTube episode of it. But I'm not seeing that. So... All right, I will look for that, and if it does exist, then uh, we can put it in the in the show notes. Onward to Chrome OS. Chromebooks may soon get native integration with Google Tasks. So this probably was a no-brainer also, but essentially Google Tasks is going to be soon on your Chromebook natively. And I'm wondering if this has to do with um, the PW, PWA that we had talked about um, earlier that was starting to show up, even though it's still very basic and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, any anything that continues to advance Google Tasks and integrate it further and give it more features, I am a fan of. So... Um, this was reported originally by About Chromebooks, and they said Google appears to be in development of a new Google Tasks app on Chromebooks that will have native integration with the systems that with the system that's glanceable. It's speculated that this might come in the form of something like Google Calendar integration on Chrome OS, which sits on the taskbar and expands on a click to show your scheduled events on their respective dates throughout the month. Now, I'm guessing that this may have something to do with the fact that they're merging the calendar tasks and calendar alerts with tasks that is now making this kind of integration possible, but I'm also guessing that there's likely to be more of the PWA front uh, in this integration as well. So stay tuned for that. Last and certainly not least, uh, full circle back to the beginning of the episode, Google I.O. 2023 starts on May 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Eastern Time? Isn't it out here? Uh, Yeah, it's in Shoreline, in Mountain View. It's just... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific, but yeah, 10 a.m. You know. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, right. This is going to be an incredible event, as it always is. I went a number of years ago, and I would love to go again sometime. Um, haven't been able to make it recently, obviously, but uh, hopefully in the future, maybe next year. Obviously, we're going to find out about the Google Fold, the Google Phone Fold, Phone Fold, Fold, Phone. Blah. Google Fold is their cell phone that folds, obviously. And uh, not only has it been rumored, not only has it been leaked, it's been literally leaked by Google saying that they're announcing it at I.O. And here's a teaser video called May the Fold Be With You, which was released on, you guessed it, May the 4th. Um, So that's definitely coming. Not to mention that the other endlessly leaked item was the Google Pixel tablet, which was leaked at last year's I.O., sort of. Um, and continues to be talked about and s- accidentally shown off, which is Google's strategy these days for promoting their, their tech. But hey, it seems to be working because we're talking about it. Uh, is going to be a six or $700 tablet, and it actually looks to be pretty interesting. So I'm waiting to, I'm uh, reserving judgment until I see actual details about it. Um, I would love to see it as an upgraded Google Hub. I don't know if that's going to be the case. It is certainly positioned to look like it is if you use it with a dock, but given the way that my kids get their grubby little fingers all over it in the kitchen counter while they're eating and, um, you know, use it to play YouTube videos or, or, or little games on it and whatnot. I'm not sure a detachable tablet is such a good idea for me to have in that exact position, but I can understand the appeal of certainly having a, a side table device that you can also grab and use as a couch tablet to browse, etc. So that's likely coming new phone, new Android uh, version um, and as I said before, likely a whole bunch of AI information, gen apps, workspace related stuff in there. So uh, if you're interested in any of those things that we have just mentioned, be sure to tune in or catch our episode next week in which we will likely spend most of it talking about the things that they have announced at uh, Google I.O. this week. So, Yeah, I have a feeling the time of 1 p.m. Eastern was used because the author is on the East Coast in Florida. Mm-hmm. Could be why. You spent the entire time checking out where Emma Roth resides. (laughs) 
just doxed <laughs> Emma Roth. It took me, it, it took me 20 <laughs> second, seconds, the, the entire time, uh-huh. just waiting for the moment to mention it. <laughs> Emma Roth is an amazing yeah. writer uh, over at The Verge. Sorry if we just let it out that you are at the East Coast, it's, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's public. It is. It is public information. I'm just joking. All right, that's all for this week. Send us your questions and comments on Twitter at Workspace Recap and on our website, WorkspaceRecap.com. You know what to do. Like and subscribe, etc. Leave us a comment if you would like to. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Workspace Recap.